I'm back on Hot Stove with J.P. Morosi on a Friday with news regarding two-time Cy Young Award winner. This from Paul Hoynes, Guardian's beat writer, Corey Kluber, the only two-time Cy Young winner in Cleveland history, has retired after 13 seasons. J.P., good morning to you. What a ride it was. What a ride. What a tremendously respected teammate. Yeah. And Paul Hoynes' tweet said it all. The only two-time Cy Young Award winner in the history of the Cleveland franchise. Remarkable history for Corey Kluber. You think about all those postseasons that he was a part of and the way in which you think about that Cleveland rotation, how that, how that was the bedrock of the organization for so many years. Terry Francona trusting Corey Kluber and all those big nights and all those big games. I think back to the 2016 postseason, he was pitching on short rest all the time. He set the standard for all those great pitchers that came through the Guardians and before then Indians organization. Just immense respect for Corey Kluber around the game. You're not going to find anyone who's been more respected over the last couple of decades as a great starting pitcher. So congratulations to Corey and his family on a great career. Well, congratulations, Tim. This graphic on our screen, that picture of him is the only time I ever saw him smiling, but that was part of his charm, right? Just so even keel. JP, what are you wearing, by the way? So I, I was wondering how long it would take you to, to ask this because I, I thought, Lauren, seconds. this was, it's a very fitting day. We've got the Dodgers are having their first workout momentarily. I said, you know what? I'm going to wear the one jersey I've got here. So thanks to Paul and John Solarski who have given me the Polish national team jersey. Yes, I am a proud Polish American myself. My grandmother born to Polish immigrants here. So I, I wanted to make sure I respected uh, the Polish national team, which is a growing national team program in Europe. So again, bardzo dobrze, gratulacja, and I'm, uh, <laughs> I wish a good dzień dobry on a casual Friday as we get ready. I was going to say the same to you. Uh, of course, thank you. Dziękuję <laughs> bardzo, dziękuję bardzo. Tuesday, punchki day. Here I don't know how my... to transition to the uh, NL West no, no. Yeah. because I'm not that talented. Do but I, we are sizing I. up the West, and here is what the projections look like in that division. According to fan graphs, 94 wins for the Dodgers. That seems light, JP. The Diamondbacks swept LA last postseason in the division series. They are right behind them. Padres, Giants, Rockies rounding out the top five. JP, let's have at it. What do you notice, and how close is this division to what you think it will be? Well, let's begin. So with the Los Angeles Dodgers, the reason why maybe their win total is a little bit lower than you might expect is there are still some concerns about the starting rotation. And we, we heard from Clayton Kershaw earlier on in the show, we expect him to make an impact in the second half. But this starting group for the Dodgers is going to make or break how this team does. And the, the importance of Yamamoto having a great first year. Remember, Otani's not going to start this season. So does Yamamoto get the ball on opening day in Seoul, South Korea? Can Glass now give them 170 innings based on his health? Miller, Paxton, Sheehan, Paxton again, there's some injury risk there. It is a rotation that has a high upside but some concerns in terms of the durability element. So I think that's going to be the key reason that we're talking about the Dodgers. Now, the reason why the Diamondbacks, I believe, are so much closer to the Dodgers than people might realize e is their rotation. Exactly. Eduardo Rodriguez comes in. Remember, the Diamondbacks swept the Dodgers last October, and then they added this guy who, even though he wasn't traded at the deadline, was one of the main deadline prizes. Everybody in baseball wanted Erod, including the Dodgers, let's not forget. So he now joins this rotation. You have Zach Gallen, the Tar Heel, as we talked about earlier on. Brandon Fought takes a step. They've got Henry and Jarvis, some good young arms there. I like the D-backs rotation right now. You'd have to say, with the five guys you've got in spring training, healthy and ready to go, I like this rotation probably the best of any rotation in the National League West belongs to Torrey Lovello and the Arizona Diamondbacks. Now, we talk about the San Diego Padres. What a busy offseason they have had. Juan Soto out, a lot of pitching comes in. Michael King has a chance to start for the San Diego Padres. I think that's going to be a huge part of their storyline. They bring in Yuki Matsui from Japan. Wusuk Go from South Korea. They remake the back end of that bullpen. And to me, 
the big question now is going to be who is going to get an everyday role in the outfield alongside Fernando Tatis Jr. Well, Lauren, this will not surprise you at all. I'm going to the great state of Michigan, the Michigan native Jacob Marcy, who was outstanding in the Arizona Fall League. Check out what he did there. He can steal some bases. He can play center field or a corner. So I'm looking for Jacob Marcy, whether he makes the opening day club or not, he will have a tremendous impact on the San Diego Padres this season. Remember that name, Jacob Marcy. Now, the San Francisco Giants, very active in the offseason market as well. Jung Hoo Lee arrives from South Korea, potentially to play center field, we believe, for the San Francisco Giants. I also love the move they made. Robbie Ray from Seattle. He's someone that they believe can start for them. And Jordan Hicks. I think this is one of the big upside plays for any team this offseason. They believe Hicks can start. The answer to that question is going to define the pitching side of their season, but I cannot wait to see Jung Hoo Lee arriving. We talk so much about the Soul Series coming up. That's the Dodgers and Padres, the first ever regular season Major League Baseball games in South Korea. Jung Hoo Lee, we know it, my favorite nickname in baseball, the grandson of the wind. He grew up idolizing Ichiro Suzuki. It's why he wears number 51. You love that lefty swing. I think he's going to have a tremendous impact in year one with the San Francisco Giants. And finally, in the NL West, the Colorado Rockies, a former Giant, Chris Bryant, their potential to surprise a little, and I don't think there'll be a playoff team certainly in 2024, but if they're going to go above the expectations, it has to be with number 23 leading the way. You, you see it there, he's played 122 games across two seasons with the Rockies. He clearly has not been healthy enough to make the big impact. Last year was a broken finger. There was a plantar fasciitis in 2022. He needs to be healthy. And, and if he is healthy, you think about that lineup, Nolan Jones, McMahon, some other young talent coming in, they could surprise on the offensive side. I'm not sure that we see enough starting pitching consistency to compete, but if Chris Bryant has a good, healthy season, we have a chance to see, I think, a better than expected year in Colorado. And again, I send my very best wishes to uh, the Polish national team as they prepare for the <laughs> European Championships later this year. I still think about how 106 wins didn't win this division a couple of years ago. Crazy, right. fascinating stuff. JP, who's winning the Super Bowl before we go? Let's hear it. Kansas City Chiefs win it 24 to 21. Right here first. Appreciate it. Have a nice weekend.